Hello everyone. Welcome to this short video introduction to my course entitled Learning Rhythm that is built upon the concepts of the book Developing Rhythmic Sensitivity and the DVD and Student Outline, also known as Developing Rhythmic Sensitivity. The course might have another name. You might say, how good is your rhythm and could you use a little help? Well, I think it might be proper for me to introduce myself to you first. My name is Jack Bell, and in this part of my history, the part that relates to the course, I served as principal percussionist with the Atlanta Symphony for 32 years and was a professor at Georgia State University for 34 years. The course, Developing Rhythmic Sensitivity, started out under a different name, it was called The Fundamentals of Rhythm and Coordination, and it gradually evolved over a 15-year period. In fact, it started out being chopped up percussion books. Now, the students accepted that, but I, of course, knew that there was a great deal yet to be learned and much missing from the concepts of teaching a course on rhythm in a proper way. But, over a 15-year period, the course gradually grew into what you now see as a completed book developing rhythmic sensitivity and a wonderfully completed, edited, two-and-a-half-hour DVD that covers every aspect of rhythm in the most minute way and with impeccable video editing by my editing partner, Howard Davis III. The lecture that is taking place on that DVD first occurred at Georgia State University in 2004 in what I would consider to be a marathon recording. It was a session that I had arranged for after I had retired. There were about 40 students in attendance plus available faculty and made for a wonderful audience. Now, the recording and all went very well with two video cameras, and we had a lot of uh, negotiation, is the friendliest word I could say, to be able to move from the university's possession of those materials to negotiating that those materials became Howard's and mine. It took approximately two more years. So at the end of that time, Howard began working vigorously on an 18-month project to change the video into this wonderful DVD that has all of the introductory slides and arrows that point out the charts and show you exactly where you are when there's a particular concept of counting being shown. So both the book and the DVD follow the very same order. It all begins with a short study of time and sound, it moves on from there into subjective and objective rhythm. In fact, there's a little story about that that I would just have to tell you here. There was a classroom gathered of professional teachers, there were probably a hundred in the room, and I asked them all to write a short definition of rhythm. And when they did, and I asked for the results, and a number of hands went up, and I asked for five or six volunteers to read their definition of rhythm, all of the definitions came out to be highly objective. They were so caught up in the mathematical basis of rhythm that they didn't really think of it in terms of its subjective nature, but the fact that rhythm covers everything that's happening in our universe, from a mother's heartbeat, to the waves coming in, to the buzzing of the mosquito, to the gait of our walk, to all of the things that we are surrounded by that make us more sensitive to rhythm when it comes to the mathematical part. Well, that first part of the course and the DVD ended in a poetic version, as I'll call it, of a def definition of rhythm. And that is known as Bell's Law of Rhythm. Now, as you can see, we're really starting to dig down into the heart of rhythm with some of these preparatory ideas. What I would like to do now 
to show you a little bit of how you can apply some of these mathematical ideas to the performance of rhythmic patterns. The information, of course, again, is covered in detail in both the book and the DVD, but I'd just like to spark your interest a little by the following observations. When we divide that simple quarter note into three parts, eight one-count rhythmic patterns occur, one of those, of course, being a rest. When we both divide and subdivide a quarter note into four parts, 16 one-count rhythmic patterns occur, with, of course, one of those being a rest. Now, you know that most of the rhythmic patterns that you'll ever play all of your life in music will consist of that combination of those eight and 16 small units or rhythmic patterns being played in some kind of a combination with each other. Well, we're, if we were to take these 24 combinations and place them in two measures of four, four time, we would actually get over, are you ready? 55 billion possible rhythmic patterns. Perhaps even more important is to know that a note, just a single little note, like a quarter note, and at this point, I'm not sure if we call it the lowly quarter note or if we call it the incredible quarter note for what it's able to produce. But if we were to take that note, we find that like all other notes, it has two properties in a measure of time. One is its length, which is known as its duration. The other is the place that it occupies in the measure of time, which is known as its position. Now think about this. Every mistake that you have ever made ever will make will occur from the fact that you are going to play a note at either the wrong time or the wrong length. And that is the basis of the starting point of rhythm. Think about that. Well, my DVD and book have dozens and dozens of other examples and new concepts for you to learn about how rhythm works. But one of my most favorite ones has to do with rhythm's relationship to conducting patterns. In fact, that was one of the favorite parts of my course for my graduate students. They found that to be the most valuable out in their actual practice in music. Did you know that for every possible meter signature, there are really only nine conducting patterns. And I'd love to be able to show you those right now in this short demonstration, but you will find those explained in absolute detail in both the book and on the DVD. So it is at that point that I will say to you, thank you for taking this very brief look with me at the concepts, the overview, and the thoughts that are connected to my course, Learning Rhythm, and my book, Developing Rhythmic Sensitivity, the DVD, and the outline that accompanies it. Goodbye.